and welcome back this is going to be a quick video we are working on a 1998 Toyota Avalon uh, customers complaint is they feel brake pulsation or a oscillation when braking I test drove the car and it does do that but they think it's from the front and usually when you have warped rotors that are causing a, a vibration or an oscillation or a pulsation when you're applying the brakes in the front your steering wheel will wiggle and the faster you're going the more it will oscillate um, if it's from the rear you'll feel it behind you or you feel it in your seat <clears throat> this one I felt it in my seat I felt the car move but I didn't feel the steering wheel move so I'm gonna check for run out on these rotors where customer is already uh, given us the okay to replace the front but I want to verify what our problem is and the way to do that is with a dial indicator and a special kit Let's see if we can show it to you like so so we take our vice grips out and we got to find a place that doesn't move to attach these to sometimes it's a caliper bracket sometimes it's the uh, strut or the mounting where the struts mount any place that doesn't move that you can get a really strong you know fit on which on this one it's going to be difficult to do maybe I can do it right here there we go so you put your vice grip on there and you've got to really get it on there so it's super tight so it doesn't move next you get the snake this guy here and there's multiple locations of how to mount the snake to your vice grips I think I should turn the vice grips around, but we'll see if we can get this to work. Okay. <clears throat> Next is to set the snake up. <clears throat> up. <clears throat> Sorry, I just ate something, so it's stuck in the back of my throat right now. <laughs> All right. Okay. So we tightened up the snake with the collar We're almost getting it ready take your dial indicator okay I don't like doing it right at 90 degrees when I set it up because it will tend to vibrate it will it will vibrate on the metal so we put it at a slight angle and then just kind of tighten it up doesn't have to be super tight but and tight enough to hold it okay kind of like that and my little needle I like to put it between three and four so that there's enough pressure on it somewhere in that ballpark tighten up our collar even tighter and then we'll use the lever here to lock it down okay then we're gonna turn our indicator to read zero all right now and, and I should have pointed this out if you notice I got the lug nuts on there they're on here because this is a floating rotor and you need it tight up up against the hub so the lug nuts lock it in place so now we're going to turn it in this direction because the uh, dial indicator is pointed at a slanted angle. Let's practice, do it a little bit more than that. And then we're going to watch the thousands of an inch to see if this is, has a wobble. So there's uh, zero, one. So this has a wobble of one, two, two and a half and usually the specification is to maximum okay 
All right, so now we're gonna repeat the same process on the next rotor. We'll be right back. All right, we're now on the driver's side. We got our equipment set back up. We're gonna do the same test. Watch out, the, watch the run out here. One, two, and it's heading back. Looks like we got two spots that are actually warped on this. And it goes to a maximum of two, it looks like. And a little bit behind the zero right there. Now you see how that vibrated going backwards? Always turn in the relationship of the slant of the dial indicator. That vibration can, can cause movement in all the mechanisms that are holding this in place and it can throw your, your, uh, your measurement out. So it looks like we got two thousands on this side that are out and two and a half thousands on that side. Now let's also talk about this. Uh, there are some people in the automotive engineering community who have paid millions for their education that have said that it's not the rotor itself that's warped, it's hard spots or the metal, metal urgy of the metal at, down to the molecular structure that's causing this and that there's some spots within the rotor that got really hot and they cooled off and they got really hard i don't know the 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 rationale behind it i'm not the engineer that came up with it but i do know that i had a car uh, uh, last month that i did this and i put new rotors on it and it wasn't the rotors. I suspect that the hub was probably bent on it. Um, and this is something to also remember when you're measuring this, the rotor is on the hub. So if your hub is bent, your rotor is going to show more run out. And again, if, if it's even bent a little bit, by the time that little bit of warpage comes out, that, that movement gets accelerated or exaggerated the further you get from it. So a tiny bit here is a lot of bit out here. So something to think about if you've been into an accident and you're trying to determine whether your rotors are warped, it may not actually be the rotors, it could actually be the hub. Uh, but this I'm pretty sure is gonna be the rotor. And uh, we're right on the line of having to recommend it or, or not. So I gotta go and look at the specifications to see what Toyota says is within reason, and then refer that to the customer and let them decide if they want to replace these rotors or not. Um, I can tell you by looking at these pads, these pads probably should go. Uh, so if he does the rotors, we're gonna put new pads on it. All right, so thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.